What's up guys, Leopold the Brave here for another q and I know it's been a while since I did the last one even though I just brought these back, but I think spacing them out more is a better idea. It helps give more time for more interesting questions, and I don't have to talk about myself as often, so it's less exhausting. If you want me to answer your questions next time, you can leave up to three questions in the comment section below. Just make sure they're all in the same comment so I can keep track of them all. Anyways, I don't want to waste any time, so let's dive right in. Crashing Basher asks, who do I think is going to be in the post credit stinger of the Sonic Movie 3? You know how like Tails was at the end of Sonic 1, and Shadow was at the end of Sonic 2. And I genuinely don't know. Some people have said Metal Sonic or Amy should be next, but I don't think any of those are bigger than Shadow, or even bigger than Knuckles, really. Maybe they could do a whole Spider-Verse thing with all the different kinds of Sonics there are, and they could have Silver and Blaze as the big characters since they're used to all the interdimensional time travel stuff. But aside from that, none that I can think of. Question number two. Do I think the Crash Bandicoot 3 boss lineup is overused or overrated? The lineup being Tiny Tiger, Dingo Dial, Entropy, Engine, and Dr. Cortex. And nah, I don't think they're overused. Maybe they reused them a bunch in the handheld games that I never played. But console game-wise, we haven't had Tiny as a boss since Crash 3, unless you want to count whatever they did with him in Titans. Entropy is probably the most overused one. I hope he takes a back seat for a game or two. I'm pretty sick of Embryo bosses as well, but he's not part of the Crash 3 lineup, so oops. And question number three. What are my thoughts on the Total Drama series reaching over 100 contestants whenever the new series comes out? And that's gonna be pretty crazy. I can't think of a single cartoon with a main cast that's that huge. I also think it's pretty crazy how I've memorized all the Total Drama contestants, but not all the US presidents. Sonic Mario Fan 10 asks, what are my opinions on Death Battle Season 9 so far? And it's pretty good, but nowhere near as good as people are saying it is. I mean, the quality of the episodes are pretty high up there, but the whole hype factor and the interesting matchups are just not the same. Aside from Hercules and Sun Wukong and maybe Magneto Tetsuo, the matchups for this season have been incredibly safe feeling and boring. Like, of course they're great, but it's kind of hard to mess these kinds of episodes up, so it's not really much of a surprise. I mean, Harley Quinn, Scarlet Witch, another JoJo character so soon after we got Dio vs. Alucard, Thor and Vegeta, Boba Fett again. Season 9 just started off as like the most generic feeling season of death battle ever. And only picked up a little bit towards the end of the first half. Let's hope the second half is much better. 2. What do I think of Pixar's Lightyear? I haven't seen it yet, but from everything I've heard, I am not excited. I was a huge fan of the original cartoon way back when it first came out, and just the idea of all that being retconned just doesn't sit right with me. And 3. Why do I swear? I, uh... I don't swear in my videos. All my videos are family friendly. That's the content I want to make, so... Uh... Yeah. Tim asks, 1. If I could make an analog horror matchup, what would my top picks be? And I love zombies, so I'd probably just do like, regular zombies versus sea zombies, the Draugr, you know, the Norse mythology ones. Or I could just do a zombie battle royale with all the different kinds of zombies in different media and different mythologies. Question number 2. If I was a writer for an official Crash Bandicoot game, how good would it be? And, um, it would be the best Crash game ever. Because I totally know these characters inside and out better than the actual current writers. <laughs> so, like, they should hire me and stuff. Uh, but no, really, I do have some good ideas in mind. I'm not sure how good they would be because I can't really be the judge of my own work. It's up to the audience reception. But I think I could do at least a decent job. Enough to where there wouldn't be any fan discourse over whether it was good or not. And question number three, what's the hardest trophy to get? Probably that one in Fall Guys that involves you to win five shows in a row. There's just so many things that can happen, the game disconnects so often. Getting that one is honestly completely luck based. Ooh, Antukin asks, what made me want to play Genshin Impact after not wanting to play it for so long? Well, the reason I didn't want to play it for such a long time is because I just kept hearing it was a knockoff of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and that it was nothing but a gotcha where you gamble for pretty girls. So I pretty much just ignored it, even when my friend circle talked about pretty much nothing but it for an entire year. But I eventually gave in and gave it a shot when my lovely beautiful girlfriend recommended it to me as well. And I'm having a ton of fun with it. It's not just a gotcha where you gamble for pretty girls, it's a legitimately good game. And even after doing everything there is to do in the game so far, I still have not spent a single penny on it. Mwahahaha. <laughs> Anyways, as for my favorite character, when I first started it was Lisa for... reasons. But as time went on it eventually became Toma, I have a bias towards him for other reasons. But now, currently, and I think it's gonna stay that way for quite a while, it's Captain Beto. 
She's my main DPS, she's my strongest character overall, her shield is amazing, and I did her hangout event and I love her backstory, it's so good. And her character design is just super cool. Radbat asks a bunch of questions. Sorry pal, only three per person. I like to explain my answers instead of simply just saying them, so doing all of these would take a bit too much time. Let's just pick a random three. One, what would I say is my most unique or weirdest matchup? Well, I have one coming in the future that pretty much takes the cake. I don't want to spoil or reveal it yet though, so as for all the ones I have out right now, probably 1-1 one -one versus GLaDOS. Just the AI battle concept is super unique, and I don't think I've seen any other versus show do it. I mean, Death Battle came pretty close with Sigma vs. Ultron and all the cyberspace virus stuff. But going full AI like this in a versus show is something I've only seen myself do so far. Let me know if I'm wrong though, I'd love to see other people's takes. 4. When will I do another Battle Royale? And honestly, I'm not sure. I can't really think of many battle royales I'd want to do, and I'm not a big fan of same series fights in general. A GTA battle royale with the new protagonists whenever GTA 6 comes out would be pretty cool. But other than that, I'm not really interested in battle royales. And number 6, what was my original idea for the season 1 finale of vs Battle Cards? For those who don't know, Saitama vs Invincible wasn't my first choice. It was going to be the season 2 premiere, but I had to move it to the season 1 finale because my original plan I was underprepared for. And that plan was Gara from Naruto versus Zhongli from Genshin Impact. I decided I was underprepared because Gara wins a bit too hard. I haven't rewatched or refreshed myself on Naruto in years, to the point where I didn't even know if Gara scaled to all that crazy moon level stuff or not. All the versus databases said no, but apparently he does, and that's why you don't rely on those versus sites alone. And although the story and lore of the characters or universe isn't important in versus battle cards and it's all about the fighting stuff, I was still extremely new to Genshin lore, and it felt like I didn't know what I was doing even though I did. Now there's nothing wrong with Gara winning, but he just won a bit too hard, and it wouldn't have made for an interesting finale. Axgazi asks, 1. Do I like Tekken's Yoshimitsu versus Soul Calibur's Yoshimitsu as a matchup? And who do I think wins? And I think it's a very cool matchup idea, the way the Manji clan connects the Tekken and Soul Calibur universes. But I don't know enough about the Soul Calibur universe to say myself. Looking at the versus sites, Yoshimitsu from Tekken clearly wins, he's stronger and he speed blitzes. But as I learned from Gara, going about it that way isn't a smart idea. Question 2. Which is the better game? Dragon Ball Fighters or Sonic Mania? And that's extremely difficult to say because they're both extremely different games. Dragon Ball Fighters is a fighting game, and Sonic Mania is a 2D platformer. I will say though, I've definitely spent more time playing Sonic Mania. Fighters is a great game of course, I just prefer 3D fighting games more. And question number three. Besides Dante and Kirby and whatnot, what are some other characters that the Versus community likes to overhype as being universal in power when they're really not? And hey, since I just mentioned Sonic, it's him. It, it's Sonic. He's not universal. Lots of people like to say he is, but there's no proof. The answer to this question is easily and undeniably Sonic. KNW Productions asks, 1. What do I think is the most popular and most overrated matchup? And for me, it would probably be any matchup that involves giant monsters or giant robots. So any Godzilla stuff, any Transformers stuff, any Gundam stuff. I just find watching giant trash cans and giant monsters very slowly swinging their arms at each other to be extremely boring. My favorite kind of fight scenes or fighting style in any kind of media is anyone that involves just completely raw hand-to-hand -hand combat. And watching gigantic metal or gigantic scaly suits try to replicate that very slowly and clunky is just not for me. Question number two. What do I think of my previous two versus shows? And I think they really need some audio editing because good grief the way my mic peaks constantly all the time. Why did I think those audio levels were okay? But nah, overall even though I find them cringe because it's my content but older, I still look back at them fondly because they help me improve to where I am now. And number three, what is my least favorite video game company? And I can't say EA because that's too predictable. And I wasn't going to say EA. My least favorite is actually Ubisoft. Please, please give me Rayman. Please, I just want more Rayman. I don't want more broken Assassin's Creed. I don't want yearly Just Dance games. I don't want more Rabbids mobile games on Rayman's anniversary. I don't want a terrible, horrendous looking Rayman redesign for an animated series. I just want a new Rayman game. That is all. Please let me have one. Anyways, that's all the questions I have for today. Be sure to leave your questions in the comment section below, and I'll see them next time. And I'll see you guys next time. Leopold the Brave, 
out. Thank you.